Hi, it's Kerner Tex here with a short series of videos about setting up networking for Linux from scratch. So this is off the back of a comment I had from one of my subscribers called Paulie107, who said that he still has issues with networking on new LF builds. Now, um, I'm assuming it's more to do with Wi-Fi than Ethernet because Wi-Fi is quite complicated beast. I, I personally to test it myself whether it's, um, you know, just the fact of having to stick an extra password into the system or signal issues. Um, I'll try and avoid it at all costs and stick to Ethernet. It's a wired connection. It's uh, much more reliable. So. Because of that reason, when I do my videos, um, you'll notice I always rely on an Ethernet connection because, well, the focus is on getting LFS built rather than um, troubleshooting networking issues. So, yeah, I th I've always thought that uh, that's part of the build that I do neglect. Um, but, yeah, that comment from Paulie107 is sort of prompted me to actually do something to, to remedy that. So what I'm going to do, I've, I've actually, because I've already built Linux from scratch 12 recently, I've just um, rebuilt it again um, up to the point where the kernel's got to be built and Grub's got to be installed on the um, boot, uh, boot sector for the actual boot up. So it's right at the very end of the build. I'm in the true environment. Um, and what I'm going to do is just continue. So it's this last uh, part of Linux from scratch, basically. Um, and the reason why I've uh, decided to do it from here is because getting hardware working in Linux generally is all about what the kernel's capable of and what it isn't capable of. So the kernel's got lots of drivers, lots of software um, to enable hardware to work. Uh, if it hasn't, you have to go elsewhere and you know maybe add plugins and so on, get modules working and so on. Uh, but generally, the vast majority of hardware is, is available uh, through the kernel. And you'll see that uh, with networking, it's extremely easy. If it's Ethernet with Wi-Fi, there's a lot more involved, both in the kernel both in terms of knowing what hardware you've got and software, firmware and so on, um, as well as things like passwords to access the um, access points. So how would I go around doing this? Well, the first thing I'll do is to get a prompt in the host environment become root. Um, you could probably do a lot of these commands to find out what hardware you've got um, as an ordinary user, but if you become root, there's less chance of things not being displayed because you're not a privileged user. And the first thing I tend to do is to use a command called lspci, which lists all the devices connected to the PCI bus. So that's the main bus, if you like, for peripherals to be connected to. Um, far, that's fast peripherals such as graphics cards, hard disks, network cards and so on. Um, most built-in network cards, uh, whether they're Ethernet or possibly Wi-Fi, are likely to be connected directly to the PCIe bus. And what that does, that lists every device connected and it also shows um, like a code, if you like, which gives you an indication of the uh, topography of the connection. Um, I can't remember exactly what these three numbers mean, but they are a hierarchy. So, for example, this OO is a top-level hierarchy. It might be one PCI bus, and then underneath that, it could be that this is the first device. That's the second device. and so, or Sorry, this will be the first device, the one starting with zero. This will be the second one and so on. And then these uh, third numbers here will be like a sub-device. So, for example, this SATA controller could be a sub, um, like a piece of hardware that's 
below the ISA bridge here um, as they both share the mill address so it's not something really to concern yourself about this number um, sometimes it does matter but for what we're doing it, it doesn't really matter at all and what we're looking for is basically anything that mentions a network or Wi-Fi so you can see straight away here there's Ethernet controller uh, it mentions that it's a gigabit network it tells you some information um, this number here is probably the chip that's used so it's an Intel 82578DM and you can go away and look for that on the internet and no doubt you get some information back so because there's a lot of information there what you could do is put this through grep ignore case and for example type in network and you'll get just that one line uh, if you're looking for Wi-Fi, you might want to put in Wi-Fi. Well, there's no Wi-Fi there, and I do know for a fact that this machine hasn't got any Wi-Fi by default. Um, so what I'll be doing to show the Wi-Fi is I've got a USB dongle to plug in, which um, I'll be using. Um, so once we've identified that we've got some of the networking hardware attached to the PCIe, bus we need to know a little bit more information about it to find out what driver it, it uses and what we can do there is to add some switches to LSPCI some options and the ones I use is K for kernel and the two options NN which show the name and the number of devices um, as well as the kernel module name for the K so you can see we've got a little bit more information there. So if I scroll back up to the networking part, which was near the top, there it is there. You can see for this device, we've got all that information there. And what it tells us is it's repeated the first bit of information, but significantly this number could be important in our investigations as to what driver we need to enable. So that would be worth making a note of. Uh, but perhaps more importantly are these two. Uh, the kernel driver, so that's the bit of code or software if you like. So there'd probably be a bit of soft, uh, source code somewhere that is either called E1000E or it's maybe more a generic name but it's got code that will uh, drive the particular network car we've got. Um, the really important information is, the most important information is this bit here, is the kernel module. So that is the module in the kernel that we would need to search to ensure that it is enabled to get the Ethernet on this system to work. So I would make note of all these things. That, that ID there. Um, not sure why there's another ID here, but it says there's a sus subsystem, so potentially that could be useful if this one doesn't get us anywhere, but I would have thought that this, this is one that would be important. The driver could be useful, but certainly by far the most important information here is the kernel module. In fact, I'll go for, so far as to say with that bit of information, you probably wouldn't need any other information to enable this bit of hardware. So... Well, straight away, the Ethernet, we, we've already finished with gathering information on what the Ethernet hardware is. Uh, so there's nothing further to be said or, or done about that for the moment. So as I said, I've got a USB Wi-Fi dongle. Um, your uh, Wi-Fi may be a dongle, uh, or yeah, maybe a dongle. It might be just a built-in USB device. It could quite possibly be attached to the PCI bus in which case it would appear in that list um, and you would see something similar to the ethernet so that that would probably be quite simple for you as well because mine's a usb i need to use a different piece of software called lsusb which as it might indicate lists the usb devices so if i run that I can quickly identify that the USB dongle is this device here. So once again, it, it shows like the topography of the device. It's on the second USB bus 
and it's been given a device number eight. So this probably refers to the port number that it's been plugged into. So if I unplugged it from the port it's in and put it in a different one, um, it would uh, probably come up with a different device number there. But for our purposes, that's irrelevant. What is relevant is, again, the name of the device. That looks like that could be a model number, so that could be useful. Um, what is very useful is the, this bit here, which tells us the manufacturer and what the model of the chip is effectively. So it's RTL, uh, which I believe stands for Realtek 8188CUS. Um, in fact, I'm not sure if that is the model number. That might be the driver actually, but it, just take, take note of that anyway. We'll, we'll see more information about that um, in a short while. Um, which will confirm that we've got the right driver. Um, it will refer to that number. Again, we've got a bus ID or a device ID rather, 73927811. So 7392 is the um, manufacturer's number and 7811 is the device number within that manufacturer. So if we go back to the Ethernet, you'll see that this one had uh, a manufacturer's number of 8086. Well, that's Intel, and it's, I believe, named after their first 16-bit uh, chip. That's all, all PCs are um, have, have chips that are great-great-great-great-grandchildren of that, that chip. They're all related to that chip. That's the um, uh, original um, chip that... Uh, PCs used. So that's that's Intel's number. Um, likewise, this this will be a number that's been assigned to Eddie Max Technology Company, uh, this 7392. And 7811 specifically relates to uh, this particular device. And in fact, you can see it's even got 7811 in the model number. So um, that's that's quite, quite a good confirmation. Um, so that again, these are the most important things that we need to take note of here. The the company, the model number could be useful, but in particular, th this will be the chip that's that's on the USB. So now we're armed with that, that bit of information. Um, the best thing to do now is to jump onto the web, get onto the browser, and go to a website called CATI, that's C-A-T, and then three E's, and then type, not canteen, and then type in the uh, manufacturer device number. So um, we don't need to do this uh, Ethernet one because we've got all, all the information we need. We know what module it is, um, but I'll do it anyway. If we type in 808610EF, which is the... Um, manufacturer device ID that we found, put that in and you'll get a link here which you click on and it gives you, basically this, this website is a database of information that's been pulled out of the um, kernel sources into a format that's easy to read and easy to navigate. Um, but basically it gives you information which should confirm what you can see with LSPCI or LSUSB. So again, if we go back to the Ethernet device, which is just here, I'll just highlight that so it's easier to read. We've got confirmation for a start that it's a PCI um, Express Gigabit Ethernet adapter. So as I say, this is LSPCI, it lists everything on the PCI bus. Um, it is a gigabit, gigabit network connection. It tells you the symbols that this particular driver depends on. So if you can't see a particular driver, then it will mean it means that these one of these aren't enabled because it says this and not that, but that and that need to be. Um, enabled uh, for this to work. It tells you what kernels it's found in, so we're going to be using kernel version 6.4. 
so you can see it's in kernel 6.0 to 6.5 so that's all right and it tells you the kernels that are built so i don't know why maybe because it's a script that scans the um, kernel sources but it's, it's displayed the same module twice there um, but that's not a problem it's got a link to the manufacturer's website for support and it's got some a link to the information regarding configuring this device so if you need to supply extra parameters to configure it in a certain way for example to set um, the, the speed or well, there's a, something there about interrupt throttle rate delays transaction delays so all sorts of settings that you can supply on the kernel command line to alter how that bit of hardware works so that information is there um, it's repeated here with some more information uh, generally these drivers can be found in several places there might be experimental drivers and so on um, but it all confirms what we already know about it um, this bit's quite useful it shows us the recognized devices that this device will support uh, sorry this driver will support so if we look for a uh, 80 sorry not uh, 8086 the 10ef device number you can see there is the information that should exactly match up with what we've got on the screen here so it says it's an 82578 dm gigabit network controller and there it is there and indeed, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if this string is directly related to the kernel message that this would have been pulled from. So, like I say, this bit point is doing it for the Ethernet, but it just confirms that what we're looking at is the correct driver. And there's some more information there about the different kernel versions um, and what, what uh, actual file provides the code to make the driver that gets compiled when you build the Linux kernel. So that shows uh, how the Ethernet works. The one that we're more interested in is the Wi Fi. So let's put that number in now. So the number for that one is that one there. Let's copy that and paste that over this. And press enter. And there it is there. So it says here it's a Realtek RTL8192CU or RTL8188CU. So generally with these um, device numbers, the number, well, generally what happens is the first few letters are a code that indicate the manufacturer. The next few numbers generally are the device number itself and then any suffix letters are generally the capabilities or the form factor that the device appears in so you can see this one mentions CU but it doesn't mention S now S could indicate that it's a USB format that could be all it is but the point is that the bulk of this i.e. all that lot matches up with the description in the um, kernel database so already we, we know we're looking at the right thing. It tells us that there's a dependency on config USB. Well, that, that kind of <laughs> makes sense. You know, you'd want the USB subsystem working to allow any USB device that's plugged into the subsystem to work. It tells you again, I don't know why it does it twice, but there you go. It tells you these are the module names. So that's the important bit we need. That's what we've got to enable in the kernel, RTL 8192. CU. So that's what you need to make a note of, um, whatever appears there to enable in the kernel. And again, it tells us what kernel versions uh, this module will appear in, the driver appears in. And again, 6.4, it's supported, it's within that range there. Um, and again, it's repeated down here. Like I said before, it's either because it's in a different place or it's because, in this case, it's supported by different kernel version numbers. So something's changed. Yeah, it's the location of the definition has changed between kernel versions. So originally it was in drivers, net, wireless, RTL, Wi-Fi, KConfig. 
Um, and now in recent kernels from 4.4 onwards, it's in drivers, net, wireless, real tech, RTL, Wi-Fi, K-Config. Um, but the module built, the module name hasn't changed. And again, as before with the Ethernet one, there's a whole list of devices. You can see that different manufacturers are actually using the same hardware. So there's one here, Chickeny, Belkin, Zixel, Guillemot, and so on. So the one I'm using is by Edimax. So again, if I look for 7811, to find 7811, there it is at the bottom, vendor 7392. Well, there is the vendor number 7392. Edimax Technology Co. Limited. And again, this does look like this information's come directly from the kernel because it's letter for letter uh, identical. There's the company name. And there's actually three entries for 7811. Um, don't know why, because they look all identical. But either way, you can see that bit of information matches exactly that bit of information there. So this this information here is really just uh, a text field. It's not actually giving us any specific information about the module before, which is why I said, um, you know, we'd use that to confirm what we know. And the confirmation is that it's not actually RTL 8188, it's RTL 8192 is the actual device or module that we're interested in. But because of the fact that this does match here, it does confirm the information at the top of the page, which is that we want module RTL 8192 CU in the kernel.